Scott, is I need a football update. For those of you who are newcomers to the show, hi, I'm Adam. Scott, sitting across from me. Say hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Yeah, thank you. Um, Scott, you know, um, I need from you a football update. I am not, I like football, but I don't keep up with it. And we've got a football, we have a football game coming up. It's well, a, well, it's kind this, of a big one. It's kind of a big one. When this episode <clears throat> airs, will it air before the Super Bowl? Honestly, it'll <laughs> It'll probably. I'm gonna try to edit it ahead of time, but it might be up right after. Okay, so we're filming, <clears throat> recording. Excuse me, we're recording this episode before the Super Bowl yes. is played. It's my birthday, is Happy what it birthday. is. It's my fucking birthday. I'm 31 years young, and I am single and ready to mingle. Let's fucking go. You can you can send a message. For your distraction at gmail.com. Tell Adam happy birthday. Ladies. And maybe some gentlemen. Sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. I need a football update. What's going on in sports? What is going on? What's the big thing? Who are the two teams that are going to be playing? What the fuck is going on? Because I don't keep up with it. And But I'm going to be at a Super Bowl game. I'm going to be at a Super Bowl party. Well, there's, there's going to be one... It's going to be wild and crazy. One very noticeable difference in this Super Bowl, Adam. Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be better than last year? I think it will be. And I think it will be. And, and here's why. This is boring last year. Yes. It, because, I almost fell asleep. Yes. There's going to be one big difference. What? The New England Patriots are not in it. Oh! It's the first time in like four years, maybe? Three years? That they haven't been in the Super Bowl. Um, there's There's an ongoing joke, like... Now that Tom Brady lost, the only washed up has beens in the Super Bowl are going to be uh, Shakira and J Lo. <laughs> That's funny, Adam, because Shakira and J Lo are performing the halftime show. That's why it's funny. And Tom Brady's old. So there's the joke. How, how old is Tom Brady? 41? 4,100. Well, yeah. <laughs> 4,100 years old. And change. So. Yes, the Patriots fucking lost, and that's awesome. The two teams that are playing in the Super Bowl, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Chiefs and 49ers. Okay. Chiefs okay. and 49ers. <clears throat> so the 49ers have a really good defense. The Chiefs, defense. The Chiefs have a very good offense. Their quarterback is a young dude who I really enjoy watching play. His name is Patrick Mahomes. He is awesome. He is very good. It's going to be a good game because you're going to have a great offense versus a great defense. And who knows what's going to happen. Um, the Chiefs, they've only won one Super Bowl ever. And it was like Super Bowl Four, I want to say. It was a long, long time ago. The Chiefs have not been good for a while. The 49ers, on the other hand, they played in the Super Bowl not that long ago. They lost to the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. But they've also won five Super Bowls. The 49ers have five wins. The Chiefs only have one. So, so the Chiefs are the underdog then at this point. Is that, is that what they are? I don't think so. I think the Chiefs will I, – I haven't looked at the line. I don't know what the, the spread is. But I think the Chiefs will probably be favored. The Chiefs will probably be the team picked to win. But it will be close. It will be close. Um, historically, if you're going by history, yes. The, the 49ers are the more storied franchise. But that doesn't mean anything when it comes to the Super Bowl. If the 49ers win, this is one thing that will make me upset. If the 49ers win, that will be their sixth Super Bowl. Why would it make you upset if they won? Because they will tie for the most Super Bowls ever. It will be a three-way tie. The New England Patriots have won six Super Bowls. And so have the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know what they say? My Pittsburgh Steelers. You know what they say? It's okay when it's in a three-way. It's not thing? gay. Is that what they say? When it's in a three-way. What they say? <laughs> I was in a three-way once, little but lo- not the cool kind. <laughs> little, little lonely iron for you. So, uh, 
Yeah, see, see, the Steelers had won six Super Bowls before anybody else. My team. So they had the most Super Bowls. That was always something I had to hang my hat on. I always had, hey, my team's won more Super Bowls than anybody else. Last year, last season, that boring game you were talking about, yeah, the Patriots, it won, the Patriots won, and they won their six. The most... Look, and they won their six, and they tied my Steelers. Now this year, if the 49ers win, they'll win their six, and they'll tie them too. Isn't that what you want, though? No, I don't you want see, that. You, do, you don't want competition. You don't want to. I want my Steelers to win every single game, every single year. Yeah, but this will make an epic fucking thing. Like, like imagine in the future, in the future, in a future Super Bowl. Let's say, assume the 49ers win. Because the 49ers are going to get their six, right? If they win. If they win, they'll be their okay. six. Yeah. Assuming the, let's assume the 49ers win. Okay. If the 49ers win, and then the next Super Bowl or future Super Bowl, it becomes 49ers versus the Steelers. Could happen. Holy shit, what a fucking game that would be. That would be an epic fucking fucking game. I'm rooting for the 49ers now, honestly. I'm rooting for them. Just, Just for that possible future. And I might be too, because of one cool thing. This is a cool thing about the 49ers. They, uh, their owner... The uh, DeBartolo York family, they're from Youngstown, Ohio, which is like right here where we live. The family that owns the 49ers, which is way out in San Francisco, California, live here, like in our town. So they come here a lot. They come here every off season. They go to Youngstown State University, YSU. They train, they practice. So it's kind of, you kind of get a local vibe from them. I yeah. know they're the San Francisco 49ers. But they kind of are the Youngstown 49ers a little bit, too. And that's kind of cool. I like that about them. But the Chiefs, man, their their quarterback, Pat Mahomes, he's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's going to do some special things. So who are the superstars uh, that we should look out for? Because I know, like, every sport has their big superstars, you know. Right, you know, right. Basketball um, has, like, LeBron and shit like that. Who are the superstars that are part of this team that, you know, we should look out for? For the Chiefs, hands down, is Patrick Mahomes, their quarterback. He is probably going to Pat be— Pat my cock. Yeah, Pat, Phil and Pat, these nuts. He is probably going to be the best player on the field. Okay. Um, but, but what position is he's he? He's the quarterback. Quarterback? Okay. Um, the big story out of the 49ers. Um, Did they have a star quarterback that's like, yeah, let's their fucking go. Their quarterback, his name is Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, he's all right. I, he's not really a star. He was, this is funny, he's won a couple Super Bowls because he was the backup quarterback to Tom Brady in New England. That's the greatest way to win a Super Bowl. You don't have to do any work. He, he sat on the bench. He was the he was the backup quarterback while Tom Brady went out and won all those Super Bowls, and now he left New England, came to San Fran. He's now their starter. Um, he's had a pretty good season. He doesn't throw the ball that much. They they have a really good running game, so he hands the ball off a lot. But their defense is what got them here. They have a player on their defense. Um, his name is Richard Sherman. He's a defensive back. He's a lot of fun. He's a I really like him. He's a flamboyant. He's a he's got a mouth on him. He's fun to watch. He used to play for the Seattle Seahawks. He won a Super Bowl with them a few years back. Um, he now plays for the 49ers. He's gonna be a fun guy to watch. I really hope it's gonna be fun. I it was like like I said. I don't know. I don't. Sucked. I don't know a lot about football, but even I said this is fucking boring it as hell. It was a terrible game. It was bad as hell. No. Did you see the uh, Baby Yoda and the Packers thing that happened? No. Tell so me apparently, about Bob Iger is a big fan of the Packers, the Green Bay Packers, and so there is a uh, picture of a hoodie that has baby yoda on the front holding a packers a football that says packers on it mm-hmm. so apparently uh that was a that was apparently a big thing for people that like the mandalorian and football they're like baby yoda likes the packers now that, that's a thing now yeah how do you feel of the packers i don't like the packers no i don't like them at we all we know somebody who loves the packers Brad. Yeah, Brad Shostall. I'll oh, say his our, name. Our friend Brad. Yeah, friend Brad. He's never been on the show. Uh, he's an artist, woodworker. Check him out. Brad Brad works or Brad Woodworking or something like that. I don't fucking know. Look up Brad Shostall. 
but he's got some good stuff, but he loves the Green Bay Packers, so I don't know how you I, felt about I, him. I knew he was a Packer fan, but he's more of a hockey guy than a football guy, so... Yeah, but still. Well, anyway, I know a couple people who are big Packer fans. I hate the Packers. I do. They're... I can't stand them. They're not my least favorite team, but... Uh, yeah, I don't like them. And they lost... They actually <laughs> lost the game right before the Super Bowl. They played the 49ers for the right to go to the Super Bowl. And the 49ers beat them by like 30 points. It was great. So, I took took the initiative, briefly, and I looked up Super Bowl betting. You know, all the crazy bets you that you make do some on Super bets? Bowls. I'm not going to make any bets. I don't oh. care about that. But, according to oddshark.com, yeah. uh, th- there's an article here called The Ultimate Guide to Super Bowl Prop Bets. You know what a prop bet is? Yes, like not bets on the game, bets yeah. on silly things. Bets on yeah. bets on stuff like that. Right, so like yeah. here here are some of the some of the big bets that they think is that they're they're seeing. Okay. First of all, the coin toss. That's Heads a or that's, tails. that's a big, big, big Tails uh, never bet. fails. I'm going tails. Is tails never fails. That's what you're gonna go for. Gonna okay. Go that, yep. Coin toss is gonna be oh, one of them. The Gatorade shower is what another color one. The Gatorade what is. color is I'm gonna going be the fucking Gatorade? Yellow. Ye- lemon lime, traditional yellow. Is yeah. yellow the traditional Gatorade? That was the original I, lemon lime. Was is the it first really? Flavor, that's yeah. a, that's a, They've come out with. It looks like piss. Why would you have that? That was the original flavor. They've come out with umpteen. It's others. gotta be purple, right? It's gotta be purple or blue. Hey, it's okay. It's gotta be purple fine, blue. Fine. Okay, the next one is the national anthem props. Um, basically, what that is, uh, it says here the star singer is performed before every sporting event. Right, blah blah blah. Right. blah. Um. Takes uh blah, blah, anthem props range or what does it say? Anthem props range from the length of time it takes to belt out the song to whether the singer will forget a word. No. So how long the song is going to be I don't versus even know. Do you know how who's singing? long? Do you know who's singing? I have no anthem? idea. I don't either. I don't know either. They're not going to forget a word. I don't expect them to mess up. I'm sure it'll be good. Uh, um, it's not going to be like Fergie in that NBA All Star game. Or whatever ho- hopefully it was. not. Whew, that was a rough one. Hopefully not. Roseanne Barr did it at a baseball oh, game. Oh, God, I did hear that. Like, oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my. Fuck Roseanne. You yeah, know, she's fuck le- her anyway. Well, you know, she's like has legitimate mental problems. Like, she had, uh, apparently she had like a, a brain injury. Like, in real life. Like, she got in like a car accident or something like that. And, like, when she was younger. And so, like, I think that's the reason why she excuses the way she is a little bit. Because she has like actual medical brain injuries. So... Can we talk about football and not Roseanne? We can. Great. Okay. All Great right. The news. next one, the next problem is the halftime show props. Okay. And it is the, uh, deals with the show itself. It allow you to bet on things like the color of the singer shirt or if they'll changes? be wearing a hat or something like that. I could see. Okay. So, so Shakira's going to do hips don't lie for sure. That song is fucking fire. I'm hoping Wyclef comes out, but I'm kind of doubting it. Um, I could see J Lo having a having one of those like short bill girl hats, like cocked to the side. She could oh. do like she could do like Jenny from the Block. I could see her. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like I, I could see that happening. I could see that happening. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, another one is the exotic props, and these are things that take place not on the field. But off the field, like um, like the price of Bitcoin at the time of kickoff, or whether Donald Trump will attend the game, things like that, like things that have nothing to do with the game, but that takes place, you know, kind of like off on the sides or whatever. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, another one is the MVP odds. Um, you know, who who do you think is going to be the most valuable player? Uh, player props is another one that says. Uh, da, 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 da. the over under yes or no right. you know head 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 matchup things like that um so there there is a if you go to oddchart.com you can see all these crazy different bets and things like that do you ever bet during the sporting i have a super, super bowl? bowl squares is what i have right now i do a super bowl squares and it's basically like you get two numbers for each team and at the end of each quarter, if those are the numbers that come up, like the end, the ending number of their score, if you get those, you win that round. It's just, it's just a fun, neat little way. Um, of course, I play fantasy football. I uh, usually do a playoff fantasy football league, but uh, they changed some of the rules for it, and I didn't like it this year, so I opted not to do it. But now I'm kind of regretting that. I wish I would have. 
But as for betting, no. No, I don't No, know. you know, hardcore not bet. You're no. not a gambler like that. Okay. So hopefully it's gonna be fun. Yeah. I'm ho- I'm hoping for a fun fun game. Um what have you been watching lately? Let's pivot. Wow. Let's pivot. What wow. have you been watching lately? I imagine you've been watching a lot. So um yeah, actually we we talked about movies a few episodes ago. It was the end of the year. You know, we talked about our favorite movies of the year and our favorite of the decade. I want to fact check myself on something, Adam. On my list, and I caught this myself. If you ever hear us say something that's bullshit, shoot us an email for distraction at gmail.com. Let us know. I caught this on myself when I went back and listened to the show. We were doing our top five or top ten of the decade. Yeah. I said James Cameron's Avatar... Because I thought that movie was released in 2010. I was wrong. It came out in 2009. I was one year off. Get the crucifix. Let's I'm nail him up to the I'm cross. I'm splitting hairs, but it was not this past decade. So, excuse me. I was incorrect on that. I thought it was 2010. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, we haven't talked about TV shows in a while. I'm going to stop right there. Let's talk about Watchmen. Let's talk about Watchmen. Let's, let's, I'm going to stop right that. there. I was going to bring up Watchmen. You were, okay. That was, that I'm sorry. Was, that's I'm sorry. what I was about to say. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say it's all about that. Watchmen. So, you really want to talk about Watchmen? Watchmen. Right? Finally. Watchmen. I finished it. I'm done with it. And he's not great. talking about the, the movie. He's talking about the, the HBO, HBO series. Yeah. yeah. What a great show that turned out to be. And you were you were iffy at first. I, I didn't say it wasn't a good show at first. It just wasn't what I was looking for. It turned into what I wanted. It Ooh, turned yeah. into what I fucking wanted. Oh, it was so good. Here's I a loved question. It, loved it. Here's a question. Is Adrian right or not? Was Adrian right in what he did or not? It's, it, it, it's this age-old <clears throat> question. It was like, was Thanos right? Exactly. It's the same deal. Yes and no. He was not wrong, but the way he came about doing it is is maddening. Like, no, like you're not wrong. But don't do it that way. That's fucking genocide. Let me tell you my favorite, favorite episode, I think, that I had in that one was the episode where... It was the episode after they really revealed who Dr. Manhattan was in the show. Which, which Spoilers! By the way, heavy, heavy fucking spoilers if you've not seen the show i'm gonna spoil the fuck out of it i don't give a shit all right dr manhattan is three two one cow which you were like early in the show you're like they keep talking too much with cow i'm sick of him i'm sick i'm sitting there like i was mother- fucking tired of him i was done with him i didn't give a shit but he was i was like he's kind of important i didn't care yeah i know that now yeah, now you know that. now i know I, I as they say hindsight's fucking 2020 exactly. but like my fate probably my favorite episode was the episode after they revealed who Dr. Manhattan was when it went, took you to the flashback when he first met uh Sister Knight. Mm-hmm. When he first met her, it was so great because and I talked about this a pat at trivia, it was so great because it showed amazingly how Dr. Manhattan sees the universe. It showed how he perceives time. He perceives everything like it's happening right now yeah. to him right this second. It's so fucking cool. And what and Pat made a point about this, and I didn't realize it before until he said it. It also shows that despite the fact that he can perceive time the way he perceives it, he can't do anything to change it. He can't alter the events to make things better or alter uh future history or anything like that it's so cool he's sitting in the bar with this with with sister yeah, Knight, well, yeah. and he's having he's telling this he's telling her like you're you you are my love i i love you you know this 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 is going to happen and stuff like that and he's going through like the future history of what is going to happen and what's even more fucked up about it is she is the one that sets the events of everything in motion whenever he's Based on the way he perceives time is he perceives everything as if it's happening now. So, like, he has a conversation with Angela, let's say, in, like, 2015 or or 2010 or whatever. But he also is having a conversation with her grandfather in, like, 2018. <clears throat> but it's happening at the same time. Right. So he can sit there he can sit there and say, well, your grandfather's telling me this right now or whatever. Because that's how he, he sees it. He sees everything happening in that instant. And so she says... Like ask Did my you grandfather. Know Judd was yeah, in Cyclops, and he's, he's like, like, "Who's Judd?" And I was like, "Ah!" And Doctor Manhattan is like, he did, didn't seem to know who he is. Like, she's like, "Holy!" F-. Even she realized, "Holy fucking shit! What did I just do?" 
Like it's so fuck. It's so cool. That was probably my. I really like the um, flashback episode where she took the memory pills. That was a good episode. That was a really good episode. Who knew Hood Justice was was a uh, a a pressed black uh, police officer? I I guessed that one. You did. I guess I did not guess Doctor Manhattan. Although Brandon, our our pal Brandon, has been on the show before. He guessed. Did he? He guessed that Cal was Doctor Manhattan for some silly little thing. Damon Lindelhoff, who did the did the show, um, he did another show called The Leftovers. I never watched it. Pat and Brandon both said it was good, but he he likes to tie in little little Easter eggs all the time. And in the scene where, uh, oh, what's her name? A uh, Lori. Yeah. Pulls out the giant blue dildo. dildo. And it was called Excalibur. Cal's name was Cal Apar. Cal Apar, Excalibur. Like, it was a dog that this is his dick. Basically. Crazy, right? But she did Alright, I get it. I get yeah, it. You get it. Within within the show writing, I get it. Yeah. Now we can, we look back on it, we're like oh. She didn't she didn't know that who that was, but within the within the, within the writing I understand that. But yeah. I guess that I guess that Will was who to justice. <clears throat> I did. And Pat I, was like, no, Hooded Justice was white. I'm like, well, it just, it's not. Also, up. also in the comic book, Hood Justice was kind of an asshole. Despite the fact they portray Hooded Justice in the show as if he was a, mm-hmm. even his own memories, they portray him as if he is a person who's only out to do good and justice and trying to beat the KKK and the Seventh Cavalry and shit like that, whatever they were called he back put, then. He put his own, because they, they almost killed him. Yeah, and he put his own vengeance ahead of everything. He wasn't a good father. He wasn't a good husband. He really wasn't a good person. None of them really are. Will was not a good person. Yeah, I would argue he was the best. What from what they portrayed, he was the best of those. Did you guys. see how he treated his family? Yeah, that was shitty, man. Well, how did he treat? How did he treat his family? Shitty. He just didn't want to be around them he was cheating on them with another guy okay that like okay that fine that besides the gay and the gay uh thing well, i don't care thing. about the homosexuality at all i care about the infidelity i mean yes you're not wrong i'm not saying you're not wrong but i mean i don't think he was a bad father was he yeah he wasn't there he was he was an absent father but he was being a hero on the streets he was, being, he was a cop during the day and a, and a hooded vigilante yes, at night. In no time for his son, who needed him more than anybody. Yeah, but his son didn't seem to like a, be affected by I it. I just, I just, I know how how the the heroes are pro- are projected in these books. They're not heroes. They're not good people. None of them really. They're just, I, yeah, they're not. They're fuck. They're people. They suck. Yes. So let's talk about Adrian for a second, okay? So I found yeah. out, I found out. He's my favorite. Probably. I found out where he was, what was going on, all this other nonsense. I'm trying to figure out, did he just get sick and tired of the complacent nature of his servants? Is that the reason why he wanted to escape? Like, did he just, well, because like, is it because he wanted a challenge? Like, what was it? It was because he wanted a challenge. You, okay. you know Everything was his plan, right? Everything was his plan. When, when his late, daughter, I mean, his daughter having a daughter wasn't his plan. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. No, yes, fuck, it was. no it fucking wasn't. He knew later. No, it yes, fucking wasn't. Did. You can't fucking tell me he knew that she was going to do that. Why else would he leave everything unattended and able to get no, his sperm? No, it out wasn't. Of it? Do you want to know why? He... Do you want to know? No, it, no, it I don't. I don't. All Part of his plan. I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe because here's the thing: when when the lady inseminated herself herself with his sperm, um, he was he w- it was before he went to whatever the uh I can't remember serious what was it no it was a serious it was a uh, fuck I don't um, remember the moon I don't remember the moon I don't remember the name of the moon it was not Titan not um. I don't. I don't remember the name of the moon, but it was a moon around like what was it like uh, uh, Ju- uh, Jupiter? Jupiter. Um, um, before he, before he, when he went to the moon, 
um is that's the moment when he was like i need like i i I need it was basically like i need a break or i need like a a challenge or some other bullshit like that that was when he was like that and she the mother inseminated herself before those events it seemed like he was surprised when he found out that this person was his daughter it seemed like he was very surprised and it seemed like he was just like after the events he was like when he realized he couldn't get his challenge um on this moon with these people it seemed like okay well i gotta go back to earth to get my challenge and who can challenge me but my daughter but it he didn't knew it all along. he did not he fucking did, he did not did know it all along. he didn't know that bitch Lyndon was up Hawking there said he did he didn't know it that is... bitch was up there spreading her legs and putting a fucking uh uh, he, egg beater up her ass or he, up her we didn't coochie see, or whatever. We didn't see what was said or how he got the ball rolling. Our our puny little minds can't comprehend the smartest man ever and how his brain works. Here's the thing: he wanted he a was, challenge when he found cha- out. Wait, let me let me. He wanted a challenge, and there was no one who could live up to his expectations of a challenge except himself. He needed someone worthy of himself. The only person who was worthy of himself was himself. So that's how he was able to have somebody, in the long run, create his <clears throat> offspring who had his genes. And he still defeated her. Because he cannot be beat. When he found out this person was his daughter... When she came to Antarctica yes, and knocked yes. on the door... When he all found acting, out, all acting. But you you can't say that because they didn't show anything after that of like a little smirk but or anything like that. He loved acting. He was all about putting on those little plays. He himself was an actor. I and don't it was fucking. All, let's, 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 I just, don't buy it. Just just I think, don't buy it. Just go with me here. Can you go with me? Yeah. Think outside the box for a minute. Look look at the bigger picture and think how awesome this is. If it was all part of his plan. Everything was his grand design. Everything was his magnum opus. This was all going to be his play. Just think how fucking cool if that he, is. If he planned everything down to the fucking T, yes. how the fuck did uh, Looking Glass knock his ass out at the end of the fucking series and it get was, arrested? It, he was so fucking shocked whenever Lori said, you're under arrest. He's like, wait, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, do you know who I fucking am? All acting. Bullshit. He needed to be knocked Bullshit. out. Bullshit. So he could get, so he could get away. Otherwise, the, he didn't get away. He yes, he teleported to get the to get the squids. He needed to get to his place in Antarctica to do that. No, John no, no. John sent him there. And but then after that, Laurie arrested him. After those events, Laurie and arrested him at the end of the ends. series. Okay, we don't but know what happens but my next. point is, but my point is. He was so fucking shocked, and then he let look. He's gonna let Looking Glass knock him out. Really? Maybe he bullshit. Won't. Maybe he's tired. He's done now, dude. I'm telling you, he is a brilliant person. It was all part of his plan, and I think that is so fucking cool. Let me tell you my kind of reasoning for why I don't completely buy. He was behind every single thing. Um, fuck, what was that I had in the back of my head? Oh, Adrian is the kind of person, his one weakness, Adrian has one weakness, in my opinion, and that is his need to brag. It's his need to brag and brag and brag and brag. So at the end of the series, when he is in his Antarctica facility and he has... Uh, for getting the plan of like you know freezing the squids and they're dropping them on the, on everything like that that is like the perfect moment for the villain to say to brag about his plan that he was behind everything the entire time adrian has a need to brag about how intelligent he is about how smart he is throughout the entire series we see him bragging to john or bragging to so-and-so or whatever about how like how how smart he is how intelligent and how he was behind everything when he we find out that um the disintegration from the comics and the, and the movie that he did to John to try to destroy him was plan B. His original plan A was the little ring to put in his forehead to make him forget everything and make him think he's human. Like he has a need 
to brag. So when he is in there with Looking Glass and Lori, and he's form, he's got his plan to stop her and everything like that. The fact that he doesn't brag that this is all part of my plan, like he uh, on the videotape to President Redford, he is even bragging about that the fact that he doesn't brag that oh this is my big this was my big plan the whole time i needed somebody to challenge me and everything like that bullshit bullshit he would have bragged about it left and right because that is his one weakness he has to brag about his plans he's the he's the ultimate super villain trope of Mm -hmm. i gotta tell you my plan before i do it or before i execute it that's his one weakness i that's fine that's and he does have that as a weakness he does like he's a bragger but I'm telling you, I think my theory is, and it's a strong one, it was all a part of his plan. But I love The Watchmen. I'm so glad you liked it. I know we talked a little bit about it. Do you think Dr. Air. Manhattan's dead? Do you think he's actually dead? I don't think he's dead. I don't I, think he's dead. I, I think he's passed his powers on, not just to Angela, but to the kids, too. Well, the son. The son. Well, he said that he could pass his powers to whoever he chooses to like he could put his essence in like the egg and that was a whole egg thing the big egg thing yeah. at the end of it where he could get put pass his particles in the egg and give somebody his powers and stuff like that right like it's interesting i don't think he gave it to the kid I maybe do. maybe he gave it to angela i don't I think, think he, he gave it to the yeah. you know did you see remember when he was building that that yeah. it was the exact castle where adrian was trapped it was a model of that castle. How else would he know that? Was it? I, I, I didn't catch that. I, just, oh, I thought it, little things. I thought it was just some no. you know weird little no. structure he was building. No, I, I didn't catch that. Castle, so, which is the castle from John's flashback from when he was a kid, fleeing World yeah. War Two, right? Yeah. So it it, I think he passed it on to the kid too. Maybe we'll see if they do a fucking season. Well, two. Well, they which, say they're not. They say they're not doing a season two. You think maybe this will lead to like a new comic or something like that? There is a new Watchmen comic, the Doomsday is Clock. Is there? Yeah, but it's terrible, I guess. Really? Alleged fortunate. Yeah. So apparently it's a it's you know the multiverse? Yeah. So how uh Superman, Batman in this comic book it was all the multiverse was all created by Doctor Manhattan. I mean he he could do it. He could do it, right? So, but it's like so. Okay, I haven't read it, but um, I know people who have, and they just said, you know, it's it's not that great. But I love the show Watchmen on HBO. <clears throat> if you haven't got a chance to check it out, I strongly recommend it. Would you recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. I hundred percent recommend. It. If you have HBO, recommend it. Even if get get that free trial. If you you don't have HBO, you know. Get the free trial, binge it's watch it. it. It's it's worth absolutely it, yeah. worth a watch. You uh, you had a little. You you did mention that it was a little slow for you at first. It was slow for me. Like. It was slow for me because, like I like I said before on the show, I was looking for a vigilante, a costume vigilante show, and it started out like the first three or four episodes as cop a show. as a cop show, and that's not what I wanted. So that's why I had a hard time with it. Like there were some bits that I liked about it, but there was like. Let, all right, the Seventh Cavalry was worthless. That was a worthless plot point. That's that's they were a, pawns. that's a big criticism I have though. Like they were there was, all pawns. but that's a criticism I have about the show. Like the it it branched itself off. It uh, catapulted itself off of the old Rorschach story of like his journal and everything like that. And I thought I thought that was going to be a bigger part of it. I thought it it was a big part of the show, but <laughs> I thought it was going to be big bigger part of the solution of the story earlier on even i thought the seventh calvary were going to be like the main antagonists but it was a little disappointing because Because they weren't yes it was because i i'm saying is it disappointing because they turned out to not be the ultimate villains yeah it was a little disappointing because you wanted the seventh calvary because yeah it was a continuation of the story is like rorschach's journal at the end at the end of the movie was a big thing and then it started with this whole like rorschach thing i was like oh fuck this is gonna be a big part and then within like the last couple episodes is like oh it turns out they're all pawns they're 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 nothing and then they all get killed within two seconds and i'm like well, that's a bit of a fucking letdown. And then we have to deal with this new villain who we haven't gotten to know over the series who just started being a villain like two seconds ago. Like we knew she was up to something, but we didn't know she was going to be the villain until like the last like 20 minutes of the fucking show or whatever. 
or like the last hour of the show. Like Lady we didn't. True, you mean? Yeah, yeah. We didn't know she was gonna be the villain like the last hour of the show, and then all of a sudden now she's the new villain. I'm like, all right, well, I have no. I have no time with you. I have no time to dislike you. I have no time to be like root for the good guys. I'm like, I don't know what you're fucking all about. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care about you. So I, I would, I thought that was, if I had to give a criticism to the show, it would be that. I think the seven cavalry should have been the big baddie of the show. Mm-hmm. So did you finish anything else? Or? I watched marriage story on Netflix is that a show or that is a that's a movie. Oh, we're a movie. Okay. Yes, okay. it's it's a movie I watch on the sh- uh, on uh, <clears throat> Netflix. It is the new Scarlett Johansson Adam Driver movie. It's basically a movie about divorce, is what it is. Um, spoilers. It's a very good movie. It's an extremely good movie. A little depressing at times. Um, it it's one of those kind of movies where it shows you that divorce can be a good can be not a good thing but like it can not it can a it doesn't have it doesn't have to be a negative experience right. until you involve lawyers and then once you involve divorce lawyers it turns into a circus um basically uh adam driver plays a character who is a owner and director at this theater in uh new york fairly fairly successful theater you know he keeps the doors open stuff like that and scarlett johansson plays an actress who's like the leading lady at this theater and she's they're married they have kid all this other stuff and it starts off with them like going through like marriage counseling and stuff like that and you find out like oh they're getting a divorce and it starts out with them being like amicable like it seems like it's going to be like they're talking about like we're not going to get lawyers you know, I don't want to be married to you. you. You know, you don't want to be married to me. Whatever. Like, we're just going through the motion at this point. Like, let's just get separated. Like, we don't, I don't want to be with you anymore. It's, it's one of those kind of things. And it seems like Adam's driver character is a, li- a little bit in denial about it a little bit. But it seems like they're getting a divorce and they're just going to sp- go their separate ways and split everything. Um, apparently, she gets a, she gets like a acting job in California or whatever nonsense. And one of her fucking bitch friends says oh you're gonna divorce let me give you the number of a lawyer and she's like no 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 i don't need a lawyer and we're gonna do this example like no bitch you need a lawyer so she, she sees this lawyer and the lawyer talks her into this big fucking thing like we can get this stuff like you know you're a victim here this and other thing despite the fact they agreed upon it's a very good movie it's an emotional movie i felt when i was watching it that adam driver was more of the victim in this movie a little bit that's just how i felt are you saying that because you're relating more to him as a guy it could be that but the way it felt like okay so the way the relationship went was what i think it was they had some marriage troubles yada 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 they started going to marriage counseling it wasn't working out he cheated on her with uh this other actress or worker or this uh, costume designer that was at the theater but it was after she threw him on the couch and basically said this isn't working we're done essentially Mm -hmm. so he got he cheated on her once and she found out about it by hacking into his email account so she's not completely innocent in this at the same time but the way the reason why i felt that was because she kind of started the train of let's turn this into a shit show by seeing that lawyer and falling for her shit. My biggest like weird thing about it was when Scarlett, Scar- Scarlett Johansson has this monologue when she's talking to the divorce uh, lawyer where she's talking about her problems, like why she wants to get out of the marriage. And her biggest problems are about, um, you know, career wise, he doesn't support me all the time. Like he, d- he doesn't, like get what i'm doing like it's it's a lot of like weird things that you would call rich people problems like they're not first they're, world problems yeah they're not rich but they're well off and she's talking about like she'll talk about like how he's a great dad he's a fantastic father he loves his kid he's a fantastic father he, he's like got to be like 10 like 9 10 something yeah. like that he's a little, He's not super young, but he's still like a little young. Yeah. Um, but he's, she's like, oh, he's a great father. And you know what? I love him to death. Like he's he's a he's he's a good husband. He treats me great and everything like that. But then she starts getting to like other problems, like you know, she he's like not supporting my career as much, and like you know, he he 
focuses on like his things more than he focuses. It's very first world problems where you're like, if this were like a real divorce, there's a lot of women that would be like, bitch, you got a great fucking husband. What are you complaining about? Like, what's the movie called? It's called Marriage Story. Marriage is what it's called. And I like me personally. Like, I'm not saying Adam Driver's character is a perfect character, but I kind of felt a little more sympathy for him than her. So there's there's it's, it's a pretty fucking good movie. I like it a lot. If you if unless you, if you're in a depressed mood, don't watch it. But if you're like feeling good about yourself and you're like, hey, you know, I'll watch a I'll watch an emotional. You recommend it? Oh yeah, I recommend it. It's a great movie. It's a, it is a good movie. Don't watch it if you're thinking about getting a divorce. But it's a great movie. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. So um, <clears throat> so I know we talked a couple episodes ago. You finished The Mandalorian, as yes. we did. We talked about we talked it on about here, that. so we don't need to discuss it too much. So, um, I'll go into my list here a little bit, because I've been watching a lot of shows. I finished finished Mandalorian, I finished Watchmen, I finished The Witcher. That's a great show. I think we talked about that. We I, I do think it. we talked about that, yeah. Finished that. I finished the... Uh, what did you think of the end of The Witcher? it you did i did i liked it i, I want to see next season my biggest criticism about the last episode of it was there wasn't enough Geralt. he was out of the picture significantly like a lot of the episode he was like i'm gone and it was all about um what's her name can't remember her name um Je- yennefer it was all about yennefer and that was cool it was a very cool sequence i, I want to never have enough yennefer man i can't either but i sweet God, I wanted I wanted does, I uh, wanted more in the last episode of Witcher I wanted more hack and slash Witcher doing some badass things I wanted a little oh more of that my God. but he was like in a fucking he was like passed out in like a sickness for like the entire episode basically so uh, what else have you been watching so I finished the show also on HBO <clears throat> just like Watchmen I finished His Dark Materials how was that I really liked it I, I still haven't watched it yet I recommend it. I suggest you watch it. If you remember the old uh, movie, Golden Compass. Oh, yeah, Big Polar Bear. Yeah. This is a lot better. <coughs> a lot better. So I, I hope so. I also watched a show on Netflix called called uh, Messiah. Did what is that? that pop up? What is that? So it was pretty neat. So this guy, he comes out of nowhere, basically. He's in the Middle East, and he's basically like, I'm the second coming. But he was like, he was like a Muslim, a Jew and a Christian, like bringing them all together. And then he comes to the United States and he like gets this following. But of course the government, like the FBI, the CIA, they don't trust him. They think he's a fake. They think he's some like cult leader, but he's like performing miracles and stuff. They think he's up to no good. It's basically like, start, what if, start what trouble if the in their savior, neighborhood. what if the savior came back today? Jesus or whoever it happens to be, would you think the government would really believe him, or you think it would be just some guy? I think it'd be some guy. I, honestly, I if if the savior came back today, I don't think the government would pay him any mind because I think they would assume that he was just some crazy jagoff. But this guy has millions of followers now. I still don't. I think they would put like a couple analysts on him. But I don't think they, I don't think they would really give that big of a shit. That's how it started. And they, they, they say stuff. There's like the boss, the boss of the CIA. And they're like, oh, it's just some crank pot or whatever, you know, no pain. They're like, yeah, and that's how. And they rattle off like David Koresh, Osama bin Laden. Like they all started off this way. They got their leader. They got their followers. And we need to nip this in the bud before it turns into one of those. Did did he have like long hair and a beard? So allegedly, um, once again, Adam talks about school. Um, I learned in my history class that Jesus didn't get portrayed as like a long haired person into like, way, like, a, Jesus. A, well, like around, well, I'm just saying, like around like the Carolingian era, which is like early European, like that, that kind of thing, because. They were called the long-haired kings, and when they were converted, they believed Jesus was like them. Like, if he's going to be the king, he's going to have long hair and stuff like that. Because they have this, they have a similar thing. Like, like you remember in Game of Thrones with Khal Drogo and them? Like, their big thing was, you know, if you get conquered, like you get your hair cut or your beard cut off or some shit like that. 
that was like one of the big things. They believe like if you're a king or a ruler or something like they're a leader and you get conquered by another army, your big punishment is your hair is cut and you can't rule again until you grow your hair back. That's why they call them the long hair like kings. Sam- Samson yeah. in the Bible. And so and so when they were converted to Christianity, they were like, Well, if we're gonna have our savior, like he's gotta be a long haired king. He's gotta be a long so that's why Jesus per- per- portrayed as uh having long hair. And before that he was portrayed as short hair with a beard, so that's what I was asking. Okay. Well, Messiah is definitely good. I recommend it. It's on Netflix. Check it out. Um so there's a couple shows that I'm watching. I'm not done with, but um, getting pretty good. I'm watching The Good Place. Yes, great show. The, where Where are you? Where are you? Um, season three, midway. Stop. Where are you in the story? I don't know episodes. Like, where are you in the story? So they're they're on Earth. They're back to Earth. Yeah. Um, but they know. Like Michael has told them. About oh, what it's happened. it's one of those things. Where it, they went to the um the judge lady, and they were judge like, lady, yeah. and they were like, look, we can prove that you know if we had good better influence, like we would be have better souls or some shit like that. It's, right. it's, it's that kind of right. thing. Okay, yeah, I remember so that. So it's that part. Um, the so, new season just started on regular TV. Yeah, season and it's the final season. I've been recording them, so as soon as I finish. Season three on Netflix. I'm going to start watching them off my DVR, and then I'll be ahead of you. But you'll be way ahead of me. I'm not. I, 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 I'm watching Netflix, so. so that's fine. So, Good Place, new season just came out. I'm I'm catching up on it. It's good. I've been watching the Clone Wars. I want to talk about the Clone Wars. I do want to talk about okay. that. Okay, I've been watching those. I'm I'm not that far yet. It's been a it's been a a hard start for me, and I know everybody keeps telling me. Just muscle through it because it gets better. It gets better. I'm still waiting for it to get better, Adam. Scott, Pat, Pat is right. Season three is when it gets very, very I'm, good. I'm not on season three, and I'm still in season. Season two, one, like early in season two. Season actually. one was when they were trying to make it very kid oriented. It was very and kid. Yeah. Season two, they start to influ- They start to introduce a little adult themes, stuff like that. I've noticed that a little more. Yeah. Season three. They are stabbing motherfuckers left and right. They're shooting people. They are doing all that stuff, and they're getting some hardcore, very good storytelling. Just, they really yeah. are. Like Patrick made a Pat friend of the show. Pat he made a point of like in season three they start talking about like deregulating the banks and stuff like that. I just hit that episode. What my biggest criticism is they're still dealing a lot in politics like they did in the prequels. It's a very lo- very political oriented that show. But it's like when they're talking about why the war is happening though. It's it it very hard is. To get away it's, from that. It very much is. Like I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions why there are certain things are happening, why things are written. But it's I am a big fan of it right now. I think this version of Anakin Skywalker is far better than what we got in the prequels so far. I'm wondering, my biggest question is, so in the prequels, Anakin was not a Padawan, but he wasn't a master. He was still under Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. But in the Why Clone- does he have a fucking Padawan learner himself? Well, he's Why? not. You're talking about Ahsoka his- is her his Padawan. Yes. His Padawan, that is Ahsoka. Because he's not, in the Clone Wars, he's not a Padawan. He's not an apprentice anymore. But he's not a Jedi Knight. He's not a Jedi Master or anything like that. He's he... not a Jedi Knight. I know he's not a Master, but there's like levels. But he's still, he's still in the, in he's the movie. He's on mo- his own. He's... In the movies, he's still under Obi-Wan. He still works with Obi-Wan all the time. He's still with him all the time. He's still, like, Obi-Wan is still kind of teaching him a little bit in the, in the movies. Up until Revenge he... of the <clears throat> Sith, right? Yeah, that's, that's the last the one. one. That's the third one. He still that takes place after the Clone Wars. Yes, yeah, but it's he's still kind of with him. He's still kind of teaching him a little. So he's like he only just gets on the council then, but he's still not a Jedi Master. I'm trying to remember. I haven't watched Episode Three in a long time. I, I I'm going to. I have to finish Clone Wars yeah. and then watch it. That's the whole <laughs> point. But is he still under Obi Wan? He's with Obi-Wan almost all the fucking time. The only time they separate is when Anakin has to take, like, Padme on some, like, bodyguard mission somewhere or some shit like that. I don't remember. And then Obi-Wan has to go, like, kill Grievous. 
or some shit like that. That like that's the only time they separate, but for the most part, they're still together. I don't know if maybe at that point he is no longer a Padawan. I don't think he is. But he's still like kind of sort of in training a little bit. But like he, in the in the show, it portrays him as if he's like a full Jedi Knight, full blown full I Jedi Knight with a Padawan. But here's my other and issue. He is with in it. episode three. I think he's a full blown Jedi. Here's my other he, issue with it. <laughs> Spoiler: He kind of dies in episode three. Yeah. So they refer to him as a Jedi, like Obi Wan tells. But Luke, they refer to Soka as a Jedi too in the show. She's referred to as a Jedi as By well. The clones. They no, with ever as everybody, even the senators, everybody. Everybody refers to her as a Jedi, too. She's, she's a Jedi Padawan, but she's a little Jedi. Well, she's still little where I'm at. Apparently, she gets older. She does get a little course. older. She, she starts uh, dual, wheel, dual wielding lightsabers. Oh, really? little, little, little double lightsaber action. But here's here's my other big thing. Two of them <laughs> Two of them once. <laughs> oh, man. That's dirty and wrong. Yeah. Um, but here's my other issue with it is it feels like if she's Anakin's Padawan... Why is she getting passed around to the other Jedi's like she's like the cheapest whore in a whorehouse? Like every other, it's it's wrong, but like it seems like there's a lot of episodes where it's like, oh, this other Jedi master that is not her direct master that's not training her is taking her on missions, or Obi Wan's taking her on missions, or the one dude with the weird fucking mask is taking her on missions. Yeah, he's like her buddy. Yeah, like there's like she's getting passed around all the time, despite the fact that she's apparently Anakin's Padawan. Kind of weird. It feels like poorly written. I don't know, but it's a great show. I like it. I haven't gotten to the great part yet. I'm muscling through it. It is. It is a great show. I've I've hit the. I've gotten past the Mandalore part they've they've see i haven't got there yet there there's a sequence of mandalore on 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 yeah. that home planet and i got to this weird episode which i'm gonna it's basically all about the force and people that and this couple people that are born directly from it or some shit like that i don't know it's weird um but it's it's a good show i'm enjoying it a lot so Wasn't one thing Anakin i can born directly from no the no force? no it's it's very different very different. She like they are like created of the force, like they are different. Are they Mandalorians? They are different entities. Are they Mandalorians? No, they're different entities, like almost godlike creatures. Um, one thing I'm really enjoying about it though is that Mila kind of sort of likes it a little bit. Like she won't sit and watch it, but she'll enjoy it sometimes. It's something you can have on around her. Oh, and it won't bother hell yeah. yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. Um. So that's, that's, good. So that's a good thing. Um, have you seen any uh, movies? Lately? Yes, yes. So I don't even know. Have we talked about it on here? I saw. Did we talk about Rise of Skywalker? We have not talked about Rise yet. Because I watched it. Um, we're coming kind of close to the end of the episode. I feel like that talk needs to be significantly longer we can do like an extra episode where we How just talk we about, talk that. about that yet? because we took me a while to see we've it, been busy but... we've been busy last well like you saw it and then the next episode we did we had mike and pat on and we were talking about the mandalorian and mm. stuff like that so that was that i think we briefly mentioned we made it, some comments I think all four of us had seen it but we made a few comments about we it we didn't go into depth and i'd like to do that maybe next week yeah so i watched i watched uh rise of skywalker um, and I watched uh, Godzilla King of Monsters. What did you think about that? I didn't like it, unfortunately. I, I, don't, keep, I can't blame you. Can't blame you. I, I, so the first Godzilla movie, the one that we, we talked about, it, I didn't like that either. But I gave this one a chance because I want to like it. And I just don't. I just don't like it. I want to know. There was Monster Fighting Monster, which was cool. Do you have a bias based on the fact that you love the original Godzilla movies? You do you, see, do you have I a bias like, about that? I like the original Japanese Godzillas. But I wasn't like a huge Godzilla fanboy. Like some people. I know a lot of people that are like nuts about it. That wasn't me. I enjoyed them. I actually like Gamera more than I like Godzilla. I was a big Gamera fan. But I liked them. And I want to like these new movies. I just. I, I don't think I have a bias. No. 
It's too bad. I want I want to like these movies, and I just I just don't. That's fair, I guess. Kyle fucking Chandler. He'll always be Coach Taylor to me. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that airship they had was pretty cool. Oh, that was gnarly. It was it was a pretty cool airship they had. I thought that was very very Japanese, in my opinion. It's very like it seems like from what video games and TV shows I've seen, Japanese seem to love their airships. So yeah. it was it was pretty cool. Pearl Harbor knows about that too. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Really? <laughs> really? Too soon? Okay. Is that is that the last what you've seen? Um, I'm I actually started watching one more show. I'm about season two or season three, and this is a classic show. This is an older show that is rave reviews, but for whatever reason, I never watched it. But people still talk about this show like it's one of the greats. I started watching The Sopranos. Are you, did you I ever mean, watch it? I mean, I, it's it's a little early to be watching that. I think you know, it's it's, it's a little soon to be watching that show. I guess Why? you know, it was it's from my it's my fucking sarcasm. Like it took you this long to watch the show? Have you watched it? No, and I have no intention of oh, watching it. Well, why not? It's good. Because I don't care. It's old. I don't care about it. It's old it's at this point. It's not as old as fucking Star Wars, and we talk about that every week. Eh, they make new Star Wars today. If they made new Sopranos today, maybe you know I'd watch it. My point is, I enjoy a good mob film. Me too. So why don't you watch The Irishman? I want to. I haven't seen it yet, though. Because it's three and a half hours long. That's why I haven't watched it. It's three and a half fucking hours long. Well, I'm watching The Fucking Sopranos, and there's like... There's a difference. Eight, eight, nine seasons There's a difference. You can stop after like 45 minutes and be like, okay, I watched that episode and I'm done. Point is... It's a popular show. It got rave reviews. I have friends who loved it when it was on. They watched it when they were when it was new, and they still talk about it to this day. So it got me thinking, I'd like to watch it. So I started watching it, and you know what? It's pretty good. I like it. So fuck you. I'm going to continue <laughs> to watch it. <laughs> yes, they go to New York City. Yes, the Twin Towers are still there. But it's okay. Too soon, Scott. Too soon. Too fucking soon. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I was very excited. Uh, my wife, Kristen, she had not, she had never seen Infinity War or Endgame, and we sat down and watched both of them. Scott, so she's I... seen them now, and I was very happy about it. She loved them. She cried. She she went through all the. I got to relive the emotions through her. It was awesome. I want your wife to come on a show in the future, okay. and I want her to review. Infinity War and Endgame. I want to see her perspective. That's what I want. Well, I, I knew going into it it would be rough because you know who her two favorite superheroes are. Well, I should say her two favorite Avengers. Iron Man and... Iron Man's her favorite. Um, Black Widow's her second favorite. Really? Okay. She I loves, didn't know that one. She loves Black Widow. She loves Iron Man. They are her two favorites. She must be excited about the movie that's coming out then. She is, actually. But she's like, wait a minute. I said, takes place before that. It's like, fucking Marvel! She's like, they bring it back? I'm like, well, no, no, they don't. They gotta go back. Sorry about that. But yeah, anyway, that's fun. She loved it, so it was cool. It was cool. A lot of fun. It was a really great reliving that movie. It's a good movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. Great movies. That's a... Uh... That's about it for that's the show. It. Yeah, That's, it. that's right. it for the show. We're on time right now. Cool. Um, if you want to get a hold of For Your Distraction, email us for distraction at gmail.com. We are on Facebook and Twitter. Search for distraction at podcast FYD. We're on SoundCloud and iTunes. Search for distraction. Like us, rate us, subscribe to us, comment us on us, share us with your friends. The only way we grow is if you guys big help us grow. Thumbs up. Five fucking stars, guys. Come on now. Subscribe here, turn on notifications. Okay. Exactly. Uh, we're also a member of the Be Real Podcasting Network, Heather Podbean, and search for uh, the Movie Guys podcast. That is our official, unofficial hub for the Be Real, Re- uh, Be Real Network right now. You can also go to YouTube. Yes. Search for Movie Guys podcasts, and we're on there. We are on YouTube. Check us out there. The YouTubes. The YouTubes. The YouTubes. Do you, do you call it the internets? Scott, do you, you say the internet? You ever say the, that's like the ultimate old man thing now? I think it is like when you say I'm on the internets. I gotta search the internets. 
You, you ever say that? I'm like the guy from Letterkenny's. Put an S on the ends of everything's. Thank you.